This week on 3D Printed Soup, it's time to start putting this thing together. That's right after this. Hello fellow makers, welcome back to 3D Printed Soup. This week we are getting to the second part of my Razor Crest Mandalorian print. I've printed all the bits, I've made sure they all fit together, now it's time to start sticking all the complicated bits and pieces inside it, get the landing gear to work, get the guns on the side and get the cockpit ready. So let's start putting these bits together, gluing them, pasting them and getting them to look like an awesome Star Wars style spaceship. Before we do that however, thanks to everyone who's liked and subscribed this month, we have got loads and loads of you. We are almost at a thousand, we're just over 900, so yeah, if you haven't liked and subscribed, and lots of you haven't because my analytics tell me so, drag your cursor down, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button, hit all the buttons except the thumbs down, don't hit that, you don't want to hit that, you like me, I'm great. You're part of the 3D printed suit gang. Initiations start very, very shortly. Let's brood ourselves a starship. Let's give this a print. Okay, let's start by printing out some of the stuff which I didn't get around to printing last week. Uh, this is uh, the ramp, uh, the cockpit floor, and also some of the extra bits for the inside to give it some flavor, so a gun rack and stuff. Now that that's printed though, we can get around to sanding down the bits which I printed. Now, because this is a PLA and I printed it on an FDM printer, there's gonna be some support material I've had to remove. And with that, there's always a little bit of damage to the plastic when you remove it. So you get rid of that by sanding it down. I'm using a medium sandpaper here at the moment. And when I finish using that, I will sand down any exterior stuff with some very fine sandpaper so you don't see any of the abrasions. So yeah, giving us a quick sand, get rid of the a few of the layer lines and some of the remaining straggles of support material. So yeah, giving this a quick go over and then we'll be ready to start construction. Right, just finishing off the engines to get rid of any of the layer lines as well and then we're ready to go. Right, this is the ramp. Uh, this fits into the rear of the Razor Crest and sort of goes down so that he can start loading, loading cargo into it. This really, really needs to be exactly the right size so it actually fits on one, the uh, mountain bracket, and two, it opens and shuts without either having a gap between it or being too big and basically not being able to open and shut and jamming or not closing at all. So yeah, important to get this the right size. So just going to file off any of the remaining print material and then yep we can continue with the build right first thing we need to do is we need to knock up some five minute epoxy uh, epoxy resin is a two-part glue you, you mix the white part and the black part together and it turns into sort of a paste which you then spread on light glue and then in sort of three to five minutes this will go off and it will cure and it will go rock solid it's much stronger than super glue and also uh, any of the other sort of PLA glues that you can use. So yeah, I love using this stuff, but uh, be very, very careful with it. There's the uh, slightly clear stuff, which is the white, and the uh, opaque stuff, which is uh, the second part, which is in the black tube. Just mix it up a bit. I'm using an old paintbrush here. Don't use it on anything you want to keep, because once this stuff sets, you ain't ever getting it off unless you use acetone. So yeah, once you've got a nice consistency, spread it onto the part you want to glue. Now this is the front of the engine. I'm gonna to attach the, to the back of the engine. Uh, there are pegs that come with this uh, kit. You can see there's a peg hole there. It's a square hole about halfway down just next to where I'm brushing. I didn't bother with those. Uh, one, because the glue will do absolutely fine and I need to squidge it around a bit to get in the right place. And two, that when I printed the pegs out, they printed a little large, so they'd actually I'd have to use a hammer to get them in and I don't particularly want that. So. I'm ignoring the pegs and I'm just using epoxy resin to uh, adhere these two parts together. You could use three minute epoxy, but uh, I like the extra couple of minutes this gives you in case I want to do more than sort of like two or three pieces glued together. It just gives me that little bit extra time to uh, apply it to the right piece before it goes off and sets. Right, I've applied it to the front. I'm also applying it to the back. With epoxy resin, it's always good to apply it to both contacting sides. 
And once done that, we're gonna line it up and make sure we get it straight. Got a bit of time to work, so get it right. Get all the all the seams lined up and make sure it's all good. Two or three seconds now is gonna save you a couple of hours later trying to basically sand it down and get it right. So yeah, we'll come back in a second when this has glued. While we're waiting for that to cure, I've still got some more resin here, so let's stick on the back part of the fuselage. Now I have used the pegs in this because I want this to hold str hold strong and it's much much easier to do that if I use pegs at the back here. So I'm going to apply it in the uh, two sockets either end of this rear of the fuselage along the edges which are going to be contacting the other part of the ship and I'll also put it on the pegs as well, jam those together and we can uh, then get them slotted in place and get them adhered. Right, with the glue in place, let's line up the uh, pegs and the holes and we'll get this attached to the back of the body. There it goes, straight in, clips down, and yeah, this is absolutely perfect. And so that will glue in about three to five minutes because it's been, the uh, resin's been sitting around there for a while, so it's getting slightly tacky and starting to go off. Uh, just make sure we haven't got any in the gap here because I want this gap to show because uh, it also looks like a seam and yeah I don't want that to be filled up with resin and make it look untidy. Okay there was a slight gap in the rainbow filament section. I used some rainbow filament because I ran out of regular filament and couldn't be bothered to wait for Amazon to come. That may have been a mistake because it warped halfway through and left a bit of a gap. So. I filled this with uh, some wood putty, left it to dry for overnight, so about 12 to 14 hours, and I'll just sand it down, and I should get a nice straight finish, and it will fill in the gap. I mean, I'm not too worried, because the razor crest has been cut apart and put back together and welded and spot welded and all kinds of things to it over the years, so uh, a little bit of uh, mess on it actually looks the part, but I don't want any of the excess uh, putty here, so I'm going to sand that all off, make it nice and smooth, and then I can paint over that and use some filler primer to get rid of any lumps and bumps. Okay, with that done, we can paint over that with some filler primer and get rid of any lumps and bumps on it, and we can move on. Now, the landing gear. This should be interesting. The landing gear actually um, comes down and goes back into the body of the Razor Crest and it all folds away. So yeah, this should be really, really good to uh, get done properly. Just make sure that I don't get any uh, glue or anything else like in it stops it working. Basic engineering works like this. It all goes inside the ship and the feet at the bottom work as almost like a panel that goes over it. So hang on, let me line this up. There we go. Goes down like that and goes back in like that and goes flat. Now the other side of the body where these uh, struts go in, um, I printed this in rainbow filament as well. And I'm just gonna make sure that, that there's no blockage and there's nothing basically impeding the movement. It looks like there's some support material which has stayed over here. So I'm gonna sand that off. And once that's been sanded off and got nice and smooth, there shouldn't be anything impeding the movement of the landing gear. So get that a Quick sand, get rid of any uh, lumps, bumps, or uh, extra burr, and then this should be absolutely perfect and ready to glue together and uh, have the landing gear uh, working fine. Let's have a look. There we go. Smooth as butter. Right, with both sides sanded, let's see how this works. So it should just pull straight out. There we go, and go over to the right. So, yep, in, out. There we go. Perfect ready to build. Finally I'm going to print off the bunk that goes underneath the cockpit. Uh, this uh, clips in underneath it so it's going to need to be painted before we assemble it. And thinking about it there's a few other bits that actually need to be painted before I assemble. So let's get on and give us a base coat before I put putting it together so we can actually uh, get on with this build. So yeah I'm using a uh, underlayer of a vase of light grey. I'm going to do two or three light coats of this. If you do one big thick coat, it ruins the detail. So yeah, we're just going to very, very, very lightly spray over these. And then I'll go back and go for any bits I've missed. And then do a final coat to get a nice sort of satin finish. Right, time to go to glue together the undercarriage. 
Uh, we've got the front bit here and that goes into a sort of a box thing that I have to construct and that will go inside the uh, cockpit underneath the seat so you won't see it. Next I've got to basically install the ramp and the doors and all the internals like this bunk here and a few of the other bits and pieces so let's go on with that and get that done now. Right we start by adhering the bunk to the back of the internal wall. I've used some more epoxy resin here and we'll put it there, let gravity do its thing and let that dry. Okay I've adhered the bunk to the floor and I've adhered the floor to the back wall so that piece is ready to be inserted into the main body. Okay I'm going to show you fitting this in fast forward because this was an absolute pain but I got the floor in, I got the back wall in and the whole thing clipped together and actually worked very very nicely. I was just getting this thing to adhere was an absolute freaking nightmare. Okay with the back wall fitted in I've also fitted the undercarriage as well which goes underneath this hidden away by the floor. There's the bunk there and the leg comes out front there and clips away really really quite nicely and neatly. Right okay it's now time to start gluing the body together so I'm going to put uh, epoxy resin on all the edges and this little lip here that hooks underneath and holds the whole thing together. Then we're going to attach the two together and hopefully that should be strong. Right I also need to attach the uh, two side hatches. There's a couple of pins. Oh whoops okay let's stand that up. I haven't got epoxy resin everywhere it's fine so that's good. Okay so we attach the uh, hatch to the right and the hatch to the left here. Not upside down. Flip it over. That's it. Good boy. Right. Balance those two there. Then we need to get the back of this, also the midsection of this. Attach it at the top. Hook on the uh, top section and also make sure that the doors and pegs all line up at the same time as well. Easier said than done. And yeah, this, this, this drove me mad for a good 5-6 minutes before I managed to get the whole thing carefully lined up. So yeah, eventually the whole thing slotted in perfectly. I could line the top up and get the lip over the top, give it a quick clip. Like so. Give it a push either side. And with a pop, there we go, all lined up and ready to go. With that attached we now need to put in the centre wall which kind of partitions the front section with the cockpit from the back section with all the storage stuff and the ramp. So this should just clip in nicely like so and there's a couple of holes on the top and the bottom where it just slides in place and just sits there snugly. So yeah there we go that is the front section pretty much completed. Now I need to move on to getting the back section attached to the front and getting making sure the landing gear is all uh, ready to go. Before we attach the rear section however we need to get this ramp attached and there are two sockets down here I should just be able to line it up, slap it in, give it a pull and it should clip into place fairly simply. Okay with that in place it should just close and yet yeah, there we are. There's a grey line around the edge of it which uh, is uh, undercoat so once I've got this thing um, fully assembled We'll use some filler primer and a bit of painting on the edge and we'll get rid of that line and it should close fairly snugly. Get my fingers around it, there we go, and there's a little hook there that holds it in place. I'll also put a couple of magnets on there later and that should also keep it closed. So yeah, very happy with that. Now we attach the landing gear. These just slot in here like so. And uh, yeah, there we go, the uh, bottom feet sit there nicely as well put the other set in here, line the feet up, 
we go and I just need to glue it and then attach the front section just a little bit more epoxy resin and all the surfaces we're going to touch and I mustn't get this anywhere near the landing gear itself otherwise it will glue it in place and then it won't work and I'll be a very very sad man all right line these up attach it hold it and then in about five minutes that will dry rock solid and then we'll be ready to uh, move on to the next step okay now for a few finishing touches we've got to put these on the landing gear which are really cool little flaps and uh, once they are hardened they will close up and when these landing gear up you won't be able to see anything because they'll cover the entire mechanism right now for the cockpit uh, chair first of all grogu's little uh, seat these just pop straight onto the uh, pillars which are on the cockpit floor and then we put in the mandalorian's flight seat same thing there's a little pillar and there's a little hole in the bottom of the seat so it just clips in and should grip nicely it's a fairly snug fit so i'm going to push this quite hard and yeah there we go perfect and i'll pop those out later and we'll give them a uh, paint okay with that done let's try the fuselage it should just clip on the top here and i'll use a bit of wire later to attach that properly but for now that's sits in there beautifully and there that is the cockpit and the front done and i think that's pretty much the razor crest complete So that's the construction complete and this thing is absolutely enormous i love the fact that it's got all the opening doors and canopies it's got side doors it's got front doors it's just absolutely great but my favorite thing about it has got to be the ingenious fold away landing gear it all just pops down folds out and that's absolutely great and the front part here as well with the box mechanism is just absolutely ingenious absolutely love this thing and it's my favorite part next we get to paint it so yes tune in next week for the painting of the razor crest this thing is going to look absolutely great in sort of a dirty silver with the yellow stripes and a few bits and pieces and lots of washing and detail thanks to the guys who actually created and made this file you you're incredible this is one of the my best 3d prints i've ever made links in the description below as always and if you do print this make sure you say thank you to them give them a like give them a make and put a picture up to show that you built the thing right i'm off to go and undercoat this bad boy stay happy stay safe don't forget to like and subscribe keep printing